Welcome to the Word Exchange Podcast. Uh, it's your host, Miguel Chavez. Got my co-host, David Cano. We're here again with another one. Brother. Yes. Hallelujah. We got a, uh, an awesome treat for you guys. We got... Uh, Su café está listo. <laughs> a key. A key. But aside uh, from that, we have an even better treat. Yeah, we got uh, Julian Terrell yeah. um, from, from Chicago. From the west side of Chicago, son. He's west here with us side. in the studio. Like the um, Jordan's neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> got to uh, shout out Colorado Springs, too, man. That's my second home. That's, that's where I, I did most of my school, elementary school, middle school, because um, I grew up with my mom mostly. Um, and I was low-key, kind of a bad kid. You know what I'm saying? I was getting into fights and stuff. So um, at certain points, I would get sent to my dad back in Chicago, and I would have to stay there from, from time to time. And went out there to visit a lot during the summers and stuff like that so shout out yeah. colorado springs yeah yeah i can't can't leave my colorado fam out nice nice so it's a pleasure to have you on man i met you in the gym um he was uh squatting how much was that 315 yeah 315 with the resistance with band. resistant bands mm -hmm. on each that was side. just to warm up <laughs> he was squatting these i have a clip right here i'm gonna throw up right here that's you? That's yeah. you? That's him, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. That was today, right? Yeah, earlier today. Right before the like gym. around noon. So he's got the resistance bands right down there connected to it. So it's pulling you down. Mm -hmm. And it's 315, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm over here. This is not, but this, just to put it in your head, I'm behind him mm -hmm. on the bench waiting for him to finish showing off. So I can use the the squat <laughs> rack, right? So he's hitting that, and then he he does like infinite amount of reps. So I got a question for you: mm -hmm. When you squat like that, mm -hmm. and you have like no, I mean, was there support? It's like, oh, so you mean you like the back? safety? No. Uh, yeah, no, that guy was his yeah. support. So, so he was just he, like, well, really, what it is? I like to have that person behind me, whether it's a a chick that I know or one of the homies, and um. Just that security behind me. Uh, they're not actually uh, uh, helping me at all. Um, more so a mental thing. Because um, support. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because yeah. I'm not gonna put no weight on the bar that I can't lift. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like I've put so much weight on the bar that people will look like, oh my God, is he gonna lift all that? Yeah. So it's like I look strong, but I'm actually stronger than I look, which throws people off all the mm. time. So he was. So, oh, go ahead. The go ahead. reason I ask is because I remember. Um, one time at the gym, I did mm. that, and <laughs> I fell backwards. Oh, really? Dude, I fell backwards, and I was so embarrassed, dude. Luckily, I didn't get hurt, but mm. it was loud, and mm. it was like the whole gym just stopped. How and embarrassing. And looked at me, and I was like, yeah, how much weight? Uh, honestly, I That's can't remember. That's probably the most embarrassing He's part. Like, just the no, bar? I, I can't remember, because it was, yeah, it was, it was just so embarrassing, bro. And then there was like all these chicks there and stuff too you know oh, so man, that's <laughs> the like worst. so i remember i got up quick you know i got it and like these two dudes came and they're like helping me one of them was like an older cat you know yeah, yeah. and he's like you are you good man are you all right and i'm just trying to like look through the corner of my eye to see if like this girl was looking were you, were you all red <laughs> yeah probably have you ever seen those videos of people that lift weights mm -hmm. and but they, they whether they power clean or they deadlift or whatever mm -hmm. but they actually lift it but then they get like lightheaded and they faint i've seen that before yeah man. that's hilarious but, but this bro. was one of those mm -hmm. machines that you you pick them up and then you walk backwards with it mm -hmm. right and then it, and then it stops and it and then after that you know you're good because you have that support automatically yeah. mm -hmm. but i didn't know how to use those machines was it the smith machine because like with the smith machine you're pretty much locked in place so it's the one you you pick it up like how do you mess that up you pick it up <laughs> and you got and you gotta walk backwards with it no that's the that's a free weight that's yeah. a free weight squat yeah rack. squat rack pretty much what you've seen in the video yeah but when you walk back there's a certain there's a point support. where yeah. where it stops and it won't let you go any further and then it goes oh yeah the, it has the bars if yeah, you're within bars. the bars yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so it was so one of those power rack thing you were in the power rack mm -hmm. yeah but i didn't Cause I didn't know how to use that machine, right? You know, so um, finally, you know, the second time, uh -huh. boom, it happened again, 
You and fell twice? I fell three times. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> three so, strikes, yeah. <laughs> so so the second he time He never went back. The second never. time the one of the dudes came and he's trying to explain to me. He's mm-hmm. like, if you pick it up and you walk backwards with it, it'll stop you. Mm-hmm. And and you won't have to worry about falling backwards. But I was so like embarrassed that I didn't pay attention to what oh, he told me. Okay. And so what I did is I just took off some of the weight mm-hmm. and I did it again. Boom, I fell a third time. Mm. And then the dude came back and like he's explaining to me. And I'm like, can you show me? <laughs> I gotta see you squat, dude. Because I'm curious. So, to, I want to know. I want to see exactly well, what was, you be doing. Yeah, but I was younger. I was a lot younger. This is a while okay. ago. Uh, but it, it's just one of those memories I have, dude. When I because now I go to the gym and I'm extra careful, mm. you know. Or like in the past few years, but no, this this is from like I want to say maybe <clears throat> eight nine years ago. Mm. So it's it was it's been a while. Dude. Um, he actually uh, in that video. Um, that we just showed he was like hey you want to work out with me i was like all right so i jumped on the rack with him Mm -hmm. and i just did i I think i did four sets but i i went down yeah i didn't i didn't do the same way he was doing obviously because um weakness but (laughs) 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 but uh lack of muscle but it's very it's a very different animal when you have those straps on that bar yeah it was uh, resistance yeah the resistance bands was just like crazy different Mm -hmm. so um it's a, it's a very good workout, but I'm glad to have you on the podcast. We're glad excited. Um, yeah, thanks, man. And, and Thank also, you. I wanted to give you a, your own mug to nice. remember us by. That's, that's actually pretty dope. I like that. The word yeah. is this podcast. So, subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Make, sure, make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button uh, to this YouTube channel. We recently uh, posted a, a clip on TikTok. We it's got blowing a lot. up. So everyone from TikTok, we want to uh, give you a shout out. Thank you for subscribing to us um, mm-hmm. for following uh, more clips coming more videos coming more episodes uh, so let, pretty much let, let us know too if there's a like a, a a specific subject that you guys want us to talk about you know drop it in the comments and uh, we'll, we'll bring it to you yeah for sure I know I know you said that someone was asking for dating advice yes so somebody reached out to me and uh, I'm, I'm not going to say any names because I'm sure Selena would probably be embarrassed. <laughs> uh, but uh, she's like, why don't you guys do a, like a like a dating or you like, know, how do you know she's into you? How yeah, do you know yeah. he's into you? Yeah. And and oh, so man. I was like, hmm, I started to think and I kind of started picking her brain. Like, what do you mean? So it, it was it was actually pretty good. But uh, so we might do an episode on that later. Um, maybe yes. approach it by a different angle. Yeah, because that's an interesting topic. Because, would like to yeah, know. exactly. Yeah. So, um, but right now, I want to get right into it. Give us a little breakdown of um, who you are, what you're into, what you've been up to, mm-hmm. and what you got going on in the future, man. Well, obviously, I love fitness. Uh, that's been a very, very big part of my life uh, since I was a young kid. Um, I come from a fit family. So, uh, you know, my dad, he's uh, been in pretty good shape. Um, as long as I've known him, you know what I mean? And uh, my mom, too, works out religiously. So a lot of stuff that I know I learned from my parents and, um, you know, just uh, being inspired by athletes, um, anime, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Watching, watching Dragon Ball, yeah. watching, watching Goku. And uh, yeah. and so you be going super sane at the yeah, gym, yeah, huh? Yeah, dude. So I got, there's veins. I got big veins that pop out of my head and my forehead Bro, and when stuff. you came in my office, I saw a vein on your Adam's apple. Yeah. I don't know. I've never How seen that How do you work before. out your Adam's apple? <laughs> Y'all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all stupid. I want a vein in my <laughs> Adam's apple. This dude, dude got muscles man. on his Adam's apple. Can't even man. see my so, Adam's apple. So when I, when, I, when I dry out, like, because we the final week of preparation before a bodybuilding show is called peak week, and that's basically when we deplete water. So after I get all that water out of me, I basically have striated fibers in my neck and pretty much just all over my entire body. You know what I mean? Like I've learned how to really perfect, you know, the uh, cutting phase when it comes to com- competition. Um, and right now, you know, I'm staying uh, very, very lean. Like I could walk on stage right now. And that's just a personal thing. I'm not looking to compete anymore or anytime soon. So, you know, with Given given the situation, you know, with the whole pandemic and everything, I just kind of want to 
just kind of stay to myself for now and just kind of focus on, um, you know, just mental health, really, because that's the reason why I'm lifting the way I am, because it's, it's for uh, therapy. Okay. So, so it's very therapeutic just being there, um, even if it's by myself, which I am mm-hmm. by myself most of the time. There's a, there's a lot of people that um, obviously, you know, look up to me for advice when it comes to lifting and stuff, and, and I love talking about it, you know what I mean? Because I've been lifting uh, since I was uh, 12 years old, um, just basically knowing what I'm doing and training for, you know, specific uh, uh, things that um, I need to be ready for, you know, wrestling and boxing and uh, stuff like that. I played a little bit of football, not a whole lot of football, but um, I wish – I could go back and change that and, and you know, do better at football. Mm. Um, I played basketball every day growing up. Never played on any of the school teams because I just didn't care. Mm. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But I had a goal, a basketball goal in my backyard and everything, and I used to always shoot on it and, and dunk and stuff like that. And and I've played in a lot of ball tournaments and stuff, but just never officially on the team or anything because, mm-hmm. like I said, I didn't care. So. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I was always more of a physical dude. And, you know, wrestling, I really took to wrestling because I had an anger problem. So, you know, that was like my thing right there. And Did you wrestle I, in high school? A little bit. Um, I tore my rotator cuff when I was 16. So that set me back a lot. Mm. Um, it made it hard to play football. Mm. And then I just mentally wasn't there because of the injury. So mm. I was kind of scared to do certain things. And I was scared to take hits because my shoulder would just – it was just so tender, you know what I mean? And I ended up quitting the team after a while because I was just like, you know what? I don't want to go through another tear, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm listening to my body. Like, I'm learning how to, like, really listen to my body. And mm-hmm. it's like, yo, like, my shoulder is like, hey, man, you don't need to be taking no more hits <laughs> like that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, like, hey, yeah. I'm going to leave this alone. Yeah. And everybody's like, why? Like, you're here for a reason. You haven't gotten cut. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you don't understand. Okay, I had surgery. Mm-hmm. It took a year to fully recover. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to have another setback. I'm mm-hmm. not waiting another year yeah. to be able to lift weights again. So I'm done. I think so. you see that a lot in athletes where surprise retirees, I mm-hmm. guess you could say. Yeah. And a lot of them point to that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, more, most recently, uh, Andrew Luck with the Colts, yeah. right? He retired and they said that he, he left – almost half a billion dollars on the table by when he retired as far as contracts and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But that's because he said himself, hey, I don't want to, you know, the, the being in rehab and rehab and rehab and trying to go through pain and pain and pain to get to the point where I can play again, yeah. so it's just not worth it. It's you know? not. And I think he did the same thing as you did is he listened mm-hmm. to his body, looked out, you know, for his future and be yeah. like, okay, I can make half a billion dollars, but I'm not going to be able to walk at the end of the day. I'm not going to be able to feel my neck at right, the end of the day. You right. know, cause, mm. So there's a lot of people, you know, they don't understand that, mm-hmm. right, that they listen to their body and nobody knows yourself better than yourself, right? So, exactly. But exactly. it takes a lot of courage to do that because it hurts your pride, it yeah. hurts your ego. Yeah. And in this case, it hurt his pocket, you know. Yeah. But, hey, you know, you, you want to be able to enjoy life or you want to mm-hmm. be rich and, you know in a wheelchair right Right, exactly and it did hurt my ego a lot because i knew what i could have done and the coaches and a lot of other people knew my potential just from us being kids and and playing for fun you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so they they knew what i could do Mm -hmm. but it's just like i can't do it right now (laughs) you know what i mean like as badly as i want to i can't yeah so yeah i just i had to leave it alone so i i think that you know, historically, January is where people sign up for the gym. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, everybody's New Year resolution is, I'm going to get buff, or I'm going to lose weight, or mm-hmm. I'm going to cut carbs, or wh- whatever, right? Because I, think, of, I think in America, that is, like, yeah. the number one, yeah. uh, uh, not trend, but resolution. New Year's resolution. Yeah. Right? I'm going to yeah. get in resolution. shape this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Well, January, like I said, historically is when everybody signs up for the gym. I mean, yeah. gym sales mm-hmm. just skyrocket. I'm not sure about this year because of the pandemic and different right, states, right, yada, yada, right. right? But I guess because of the fact that, you know, you've you've uh, been fit and you come from a fit family, you mm-hmm. know, and things like that. One thing that you mentioned that I thought was real interesting is you don't do it to stay fit physically. Mm-hmm. You do it 
to stay fit mentally. Yeah. Mm. So can you expound on that a little for us? Because right now, I think mental health is something that's really big. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And the fact that yes. you said, I don't do it to stay fit physically. Mm -hmm. I do it to stay fit mentally. I think if people approached it like that, mm -hmm. they'd have a different outlook on weightlifting mm -hmm. on going to the gym because people look at the gym be like oh okay well you know I, i'm not looking to stay fit you know i'm not i don't want to get buff you know i right you know right. or just the amount of work that it takes yeah you and know? commitment a, right yeah. so right right so there's a couple of things your consistency mm -hmm. obviously discipline yep right yeah uh, but could you expand a little more on on the the mental fitness side of it oh man so it's it's more mental than physical mm -hmm. for sure um, because it, it takes a dysfunctional person to go to the gym every single day and do the crazy workouts that I do every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, because there's a lot of things that go on in my head. You know what I mean? Like, I'm genuinely a very happy person. I'm always in a good mood. I'm always smiling and joking around with people. Um, but a lot of times um, I'm angry because of different things that happen and that goes back to you know ptsd i've dealt with that a lot in my life and it's not something that i talk about a whole lot mm -hmm. but i've actually seen and experienced a lot of different things mm -hmm. and and you know over the second shutdown um a lot of emotions came out and it, it happened with a lot of people you know some people committed suicide unfortunately and um you know some people resorted to you know other crimes hurting other people and mm -hmm. stuff like that but you know i live alone and um you know that's a that's a good thing i don't want to say it's a bad thing living alone because i was able to deal with myself and focus on myself without you know anybody bothering me or any distractions or anything so um a lot of uh emotions came out just things that i thought that were gone and that i hadn't experienced in a very long time and so you know i'm just i'm sitting in my house one particular day and uh I don't know, the tears just started flowing, bro. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, yeah. what is wrong with me? Right, right, <laughs> like, there's right, nobody yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm fine. Well, I'm not fine. Yeah. But there's something going on inside. There's something going so on you inside. you thought you were fine. I thought I was fine. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it just goes to show you take that one thing away from a person that they enjoy doing more than anything, then it has a very, very bad effect on them. So, and, and that's so what happened to me. If you don't mind me asking, what happened? Uh, when you're at that point, you know? Well, I started thinking about, um, you know, because your mind wanders. And so I started thinking about, you know, my ex-wife and just stuff that she did to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I just got angry all over again. You know what I mean? And uh, it was a lot of, uh, what's the word? It was a lot of, um, like, she lied to me a lot. You know what I mean? And uh, like resentment? Like, yeah, a lot of resentment because looking back, I can, I can kind of pinpoint each time she was cheating on me, and she even cheated on me before we got married, bro. And I was just too blind to see it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to believe it. I just wanted to believe that she was this good person that mm -hmm. I was gonna marry. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of problems, bro. Like mm -hmm. she, she used to put her hands on me and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And her parents even caught her putting her hands on me, mm -hmm. and they would get on her about it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like she was the type of person that would uh tell a one-sided story manipulate and her. yeah manipulate yeah. make stuff up throw a little yeah. extra in there mm -hmm. and make it seem like i'm the bad guy yeah it, it's bro i've been there dude like i was in a toxic relationship for seven years that's the word toxic yeah yeah and uh dude like i i did a lot of things too you know mm -hmm. but this chick she was crazy dude she was crazy, but because she's a girl, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And when girls are more emotional and they can, some girls can just cry. Yeah. You know, and um, it, she drove, bro, like the way I was raised and I got, I have two daughters mm -hmm. that I'm raising on my own. I'm a single parent. Mm -hmm. um, and she's not the mother of my kids, but uh, she was, when I got with her, I already had my kids and, and she kind of helped me raise my kids a little bit. I mean, it yeah. wasn't always bad, right? but she was a crazy chick, bro. And, um, dude, like, I got some stories, bro, and I'm sure you got some, too. Man. You know, like, cops getting called. Uh, mm -hmm. She went to jail. I went to jail. Uh, domestic violence. But, oh, but, but about her, like, 
this girl, bro, would get in my face and start, like, she'd start hitting me, bro. And she'd be like, come on, hit me, hit me, hit me, you know, and like, and just start hitting me, bro. I can relate. And so, like, when you're at that point, dude, and you're angry, dude, mm -hmm. like, I mm -hmm. would try to walk away and this chick would not let me, dude. She would follow me. I remember one time she hopped on top of the hood of the car. I was trying to drive off. Mm -hmm. Dude, it got to the point where I began to get physical with her. And mm -hmm. this was completely outside of my character, dude. But she'd get in my face and boom, I'd just push her, dude. And she'd mm -hmm. go flying, you know. And, like, stuff like that, dude, where I started to put my hands on her. There was a time. There was this one time. Um, she was washing the dishes and she was complaining about something and I'm watching TV and I just kind of like brushed it off, whatever she said. And then, whoom, this plate just like barely, dude, like, like <laughs> missed me like by that wow. much. Whoom, <laughs> this plate flies. And there was a, a, a bottle of laundry detergent on the coffee table. And that was the first thing there. I grabbed it, dude, and I threw it at her. And I hit her right on her leg, and it, and she would bruise easily. Mm. So I, it, she had a huge bruise on her leg. Her dad came to talk to me, and mm. and he's like, "Why does she have a bruise on her leg?" And so then I looked like the bad guy. You know what I mean? Wow. And, and that wasn't okay what I did. But right, what what right. I should have done as a man when I saw all these red flags, I should have just walked away. Yeah, you yeah. know. And and sometimes, bro, like. When we're with someone, especially when you when you mm. when you when you have sex with someone, yeah, you know, a yeah. lot of people don't believe this, but you become tied to this yeah. person, the soul ties, tied. Yeah. yeah, you know, and and you know, the Bible says, actually, I don't know if the Bible says this, but you know, when a man <laughs> and a woman w w they become one flesh, yeah, the Bible does, yeah, say yeah, that. yeah, 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 they become one flesh, right? Exactly. So it, when you're used to someone. It's not that easy right. to just let them exactly. go. You know what so I mean? Exactly. That's why you meet a lot of exactly. people that are in toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. And you're on the outside looking in and you're just like, man, why doesn't she just leave him? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dude, drop dead. I'm out. You know, but it's familiarity. Mm -hmm. Right. You find comfort in the known. Mm -hmm. And that known is toxic. And at times it's physical. And mm -hmm. at times it's, you know. Uh, emotionally damaging and, mm -hmm. and, and psychological damaging. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. because that's all you ever known, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you grew up in a relationship like that, then mm -hmm. you're going to gravitate to that. So a yeah. lot of times we're like, man, why, 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 does, why doesn't she or he just leave her or him? Right. It's because they can't. They literally can't. Right. You know? They, right. They, a lot they, of it too they, is, they you know, they were, the person is brought up seeing abuse, <laughs> mm -hmm. seeing yeah. dysfunctional family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're like, Okay, this is normal. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right, what I what I'm right. going through with my girl is normal. Yeah. Right. Uh, because my parents went through it. Yeah. And, and yeah. so on. And so it, it's it's almost like it's a brainwashing yeah. of your Yeah, well yourself, you're hardwired you like know? that. Your brain yeah. starts being hardwired like that. So getting back to what you said, right? So you mm -hmm. said you do it because of the mental fitness. Yeah. So during this pandemic, right, when everything mm -hmm. was shut down and stuff like that, all of a sudden everybody that and I'm not making light of it. Because, you know, uh, two days ago, mm -hmm. uh, two days ago, yesterday, thir Thursday, thir the Wednesday, Wednesday, I lost my grandpa. And it's, I think it's be they think it's because of COVID, right? So I'm not making light of people that have passed because of COVID. But yeah, my right. wife just lost her grandfather. Yeah, see? Yeah, so it's, it's affecting everybody differently. But what I'm saying is now, ev now everything that's happened nowadays is all tied to COVID, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And because of that depression has been kind of left to the side right. anxiety has been left to the side suicide right. has been left to the side right uh, right all these people that can't go to the gym right, right are now going to pills they're going mm -hmm. back to you know uh you know whatever they were doing mm -hmm. or whatever they can fill that void yep. right whether if it's anger now they're beating people up because mm -hmm. they can't beat the weights right you know what i'm saying right. so it's it, i mean how did you cope with that, right? The fact that you, you couldn't go to a gym, yeah. how did you cope with that? W what did you do? Well, well, first, well, the feelings that rose up in me, um, I guess the reason why I started thinking about, like, stuff that I experienced with my ex was because, uh, once again, the gym, she tried to take away something that I love mm. because when I would go to the gym, she would get mad 
and she would ask me, who am I trying to look good for? Mm. And it's just like, oh, myself, this is mm. mental, this is therapy for me. Mm. What are you talking about? I don't care about other people in there. I care about myself. Mm. This is about my well-being, not them. Like, I don't care about them, you know? And I even tried to get her to come with me, you know, a bunch of times. And the couple of times that she came, she was just nonchalant and just not no motivated. Yeah, just not motivated and just going through the motions. And then one day, I looked at her and I got mad and I said, "Let's go, mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> let's go. We're done. Yeah. We're done. Let's yeah. go." And it just it made me mad, bro, because mm-hmm. I'm just like, this is something that I love to do. Mm-hmm. And she would she would complain and be like, "Well, I get too muscular," and I'm just like, "Well, there's different methods of training. Mm-hmm. Right. If you don't want to be too muscular, then we can just do a different training style for you, so that you're just toned, and that's mm-hmm. it." Mm-hmm. Um, we did get physical a bunch of different times, and I never, like, punched her, pushed her, slapped her, none of that. I would hold her and restrain her a bunch of different times. And, you know, she's thrown punches at me and slapped me and all type of stuff. And I would get pissed, and I would slam doors and stuff like that. I would leave and go for walks a lot of different times. Mm. And there would be times where I forgot my keys, and then she wouldn't let me get back in the house. She would just, like, let me sit out there for a couple hours. And I'm just like... This chick, man, I need. To, I have to go to work in the morning. It's yeah. like eleven thirty. Mm-hmm. I got to get up at like six. You feel me? And I'm and just if you like, make too much noise, you're gonna look like the one that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, somebody gonna call the cops <laughs> on me because the cops did get called maybe once or twice, but it wasn't like nobody went to jail or nothing like that. They just kind of talked to us and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was another time where I had to go to a behavioral health institution uh, just to kind of like get myself straight, and I was there for some pretty angry reasons i was angry with my ex Mm -hmm. and i just i wanted her away from me like i wanted to choke her Mm -hmm. because she was making me that mad Mm -hmm. because it was just like you know you got to stop lying we have Mm -hmm. to be able to sit down and talk you got to stop accusing me for cheating on you when i haven't done anything Mm -hmm. you know one time she came in the house and she's opening up cabinets and looking around she had blew my phone up i had just gotten off work early that day Mm -hmm. and i was in the shower and I guess she was at the grocery store or something. So she comes home and she's blowing up my phone and stuff because she knew I was home early because I texted her. And um, she's like, yeah, you better be getting out the shower mm-hmm. or something. I thought you was in here doing something. You ain't had no business. Mm-hmm. And she's opening up cabinets and looking through everything. And I'm you, like, is she looking for somebody? Yeah. I'm like, what you think? I got a midget tuck to be here or something? Yeah. Like, what I, you I put it next to Lucky Charms. Yeah. yeah like, hey, hey. You think I got a Lucky Charm girl hidden up in here somewhere? Ain't nobody in here. Uh-huh. Ain't nobody in here. Yeah. Stop you being ridiculous. Yeah. No one's in here. Yeah. So. Dude, I, I got this crazy story, and it, I call it the Jamba Juice story. <laughs> so check this, this out. Uh, me and this the same girl, because we were we would like break up, and mm-hmm. then we'd get back together, and you know we did that for seven years. And one of the times we broke up, um, we ended up we both ended up getting restraining orders on each other, and uh, dude, it was a mess, bro. Um. But she called me. I had just got off of work. And she said, can we talk? Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. And so I was by the Park Place Mall. So she said, I'm craving Jamba Juice. <laughs> she said, can you meet me at the Jamba Juice at the Park Place Mall? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, cool. So I go to the, you know, I go, I meet her there in the food court. Mm-hmm. I, I had parked in the back and I guess she had parked in the front. So I went in there and she orders her drink mm-hmm. and then she looks at me and I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm good. And she's just standing there. She's like, gives me this look like. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you want me to pay? She's like, well, you're the man. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy like that, bro. Wow. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I paid for her Jamba Juice. And uh, so we walked out, we go to the back, she gets in my car, and I'm driving around to the front of the mall mm-hmm. so I can take her back to her car. And I had to go pick up my kids, and and then she was getting off of her day job, and she was going to her night job, so she was in that in-between. Mm-hmm. And um, we started arguing about something, I don't even remember, but we started arguing about something, and so I parked right behind this car I thought was hers. Mm-hmm. And I told her, get out of my car. 
And she's like, no, I'm not going to get out of the car. And I'm like, I have to go and you got to go to work. Mm -hmm. So get out of the car. She didn't want to get out of the car, dude. So I, I, I picked up my phone and I pretended like I was calling the cops because I thought that that was going to scare her. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, she's like sipping on her Jamba juice all stupid. And I just, I remember I got <laughs> mad, dude. And I grabbed the freaking Jamba juice. I grabbed it out of her hands and I stepped out of the car. And I was like, she's like, give me back my Jamba juice. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going to give you back your Jamba juice until you get out of my car. And then she's like, give me the Jamba juice. And I'm like, no. Where I messed up, I left the keys in the ignition, right? Oh, but I man. had stepped out of the car, and I'm like, I'll give it to you, but I need you need to come out of the car. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, give me my juice. She took the keys out of the ignition and got out of my car and took off running. Oh, my god! And it turns out the car that I had parked behind was somebody else's. wasn't hers. It was just the same type of car. Yeah. But I'm in the middle of the aisle of the parking lot there. Yeah. And she's like real short and little. So like I lost her. <laughs> <laughs> My ex was like five too. <laughs> I'm like, where'd she go? So I'm like, I look towards the end and I'm like, I'm just going to stand probably back there. at Jamba Juice. She has to come out. Yeah. So anyway, I come out and then I see her coming out. And I'm standing there and I'm still holding the Jamba Juice and I'm holding my phone on the other hand. And I stand in front of her, right? And she's mm -hmm. like trying to pull out. And then she's like, give me my Jamba Juice. <laughs> and I'm like, give me my car keys. Hand me my keys and we'll do it at the same time. <laughs> same time. Okay. Man, same time. But, but I, I didn't want to like move because I was afraid she was going to take off. Yeah. So I'm still standing in the front of a car and she's like, get out of the way. And I'm like, no, can you just drop the keys out the window and then you can go? Mm -hmm. And she like backed up mm -hmm. and I thought she was going to try to go around me. No, dude, she came at me with her car. Boom. And, bro, I jumped on top of her hood, and she just started taking oh, off, bro. Gosh, and man. she's going, I want to say, uh, I don't know, 35 to 40 miles per hour there at the in the mall. Boom. And then she just breaks, and I flew off of the car. I remember oh I was wearing shorts, heck. and I cut all my knees, dude. Got oh. cut up bad. And then she just, boom, takes off. And then I see this fat security guy running. And he's like, I saw the whole thing. I saw the you whole saw thing. saw Paul Blart. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking that. Did he come with his ball cop? He didn't have a scooter? No. Nah. He's segue. just running, dude, like pulling up his pants. And uh, Oh, that's so funny. So dude. they called the cops. The cops got there. And then they're like, we're going to have to call a, a tow truck. And I didn't have a spare key for that car at the time. Oh, man. And uh, so I'm trying to call her. And I'm like, she finally answered. And I'm like, can you please just bring me back my keys? And then she's like, I want my Jamba Juice. Oh, God. Like, she's still making a big deal about the Jamba Juice. Yo, that is crazy. And so at this point, I had already threw it away, dude. The cop got, gets there and he's like, let me talk to her. So he's on the phone with her and he's talking to her. And then... Uh, the cop kind of like walks away and he's talking to her and then he comes back and he goes, um, what's with this Jamba juice? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not going to go back and give you back the keys because uh, I'm going to go to jail for hitting you with the car. And she's like, and you you did that. I backed away and you got on top of the hood in my car. And I like, she's trying to like, you know, turn trying to around. Flip the yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and she's like, you got on top of my car and I got scared. <laughs> <laughs> you in a whole machine. You in yeah. a vehicle. I think we should have both of your exes on this next Dude. episode. Oh, God. They <laughs> wouldn't be able to see each other because crazy women can't see each other. You feel me? Like, <laughs> They don't see anything wrong with what they do. Yeah. It's just true. like zombies. Like, yeah. you ever see a movie with zombies? Like, hey, man, what's going on? Like, hey. yeah. like nah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crazy women are the same thing. Like, you know what? I'm going to throw a brick through his windshield. Mm hmm, girl, do it. I'll go with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. I got a hold of one of her uh, cousins, this one dude, and I'm like, bro. I will fill up your gas tank. Please just grab the keys from her 
Otherwise, they're going to tow my car, dude, and I, I need my car. Right. So he's like, all right, I got you, bro. Don't worry. So he talked to her, got a hold of her, and he got the keys from her. So mm-hmm. he's like, I'm on my way. So I'm like, cool. So I told the cops, yeah, someone's already on their way to give me the keys, and the cops are still there. And and um, the dude, her cousin gets there, and then uh, he's like, hey, bro. She told me not to give you these keys back until you give me back the John <laughs> oh, God. This is like two hours later. Did you taste dude? the juice? I no. don't know how good that juice was. <laughs> that must have been some good juice. And I was like, dude, she is crazy, bro. And then he's like, his her own cousin, like, bro, stay away from her. John juice. I would have probably drank that juice. I'd have been like, why she want this juice so bad? I'd've, oh, this is pretty good, actually. I ain't never had John juice before. You never had it? Nah. <laughs> I mean, it's too <laughs> That's healthy. why I'm curious. Like, yo, how good was that? Juice I know, right? To make her go that crazy. I mean, it's about that. So <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We were talking about your mental um, release through working out. Yeah. So yeah. before that, you competed. Mm-hmm. Like an actual since 2014. Is it a bodybuilding competition? Is what yes, it was? Sir. Yes, sir. So it started off as bodybuilding and then they come up they came out with this new category called men's classic physique which basically takes us back to the old school era of athletic aesthetic and just beautiful physiques was that like the era of uh arnold, arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Oh, okay absolutely hey by, yeah. by chance do you know um john peña he was the owner of power and physique john that sounds familiar i probably do i probably do he's a he's a like a what do they call them? Power lifters or mm-hmm. power lifter? Yeah, and he had his own gym. It was power and physique. A lot of uh, a lot of bodybuilders, local bodybuilders, were very familiar. So but I don't think he man, has. His I gym know anymore. everybody. Dude. What, what's like, the what's the difference between a power lifter and a bodybuilder? So with power lifting, it's basically how much weight you can lift. Either you lift it or you don't. Mm. Uh, with bodybuilding, it's all about how you look. Okay. So you want to look as perfect, as crisp, as proportionate, symmetrical. Just like a statue, like an anatomy chart. Yeah. So, remember the? I'm not sure if they still give on ESPN a uh, World Strongest Man competition. Mm-hmm. Those are power lifters, right? That's strong man. The strong man. Or so, so strong. So strong so man. Difference different. between power lifters and strong man. Right. Okay. What's the difference? So with power lifting, you've got your, uh, is it three or four? I believe it's three movements that you do so the first one would be in i'm probably out of order mm-hmm. but the bench press flat bench mm-hmm. uh squat max mm-hmm. and deadlift max so yeah three lifts mm-hmm. and then with strong man you're lifting atlas stones you're pulling trucks okay you're you're uh you're squatting um basically the back of a trailer yeah because with strong men they don't dumping. they don't really care about their physique obviously most of them know, don't like they're most of they're them just don't. big but, huge men yeah, but like I've been noticing where a lot of strong men are starting to lean out now. Because okay. before, a lot of them were just like these big old strong dudes and they weren't really all that, you know, cut. Mm-hmm. You know, you could tell they were muscular, but a lot of them had bellies and stuff. But now I'm noticing a lot of them are starting to lean out. Like Half Thor Bjorsen, Bjor, Bjor, mm-hmm. whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, Shaw, Brian Shaw, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's another one. He I've Lean. noticed he's, he's got a six pack now. Oh, really? Like everybody getting all these six packs. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, that's crazy. But that's cool though. I, I I admire that because, you know, when I see a big dude who's not like super lean, lifting up huge amount of weight, it doesn't impress me because he's not lean. Because when you have a lot of fat on you and you're strong, I expect that. You know what I mean? I have a lot of fat and I'm not strong. Yeah, so so competing was so much fun, dude. Like the first time I competed, I didn't know what I was doing at all. Um, Is it uncomfortable to be in those uh, speedos? <laughs> it, it it was the first time. <laughs> it was the first time. Like, like the first time. So my first pair of speedos, and they're all silky. Extra small. These. They're all silky, like bright orange. So I didn't know anything <laughs> about the sizes. So my first pair of speedo, speedos was a size medium. And there were these yellow sparkly ones. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you're all oily. Yeah, dude. Like when they did my spray tan, some of the spray tan got on them. On the speedo? And it looked real bad in the in the back part. They like it, poop? Yeah, it, <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody knew. 
everybody do do. <laughs> <laughs> well, nah, everybody knew it was the he's spray like, tan. He's like, hey man, you got some doo doo on you. <laughs> <laughs> He's man, like, he must have been nervous. Yeah. He's like, no, that's over spray. Oh yeah, it's it's like, like, yeah, that's his first time. Like you know, that's <laughs> spray tan. Cut him a No, I actually, I actually time. threw up. I actually threw up in the bathroom before I went on because I was so nervous. On your first, your first time. Yeah, I wow. threw up in the bathroom. Yeah, it was a four week diet. I threw up my first time. I only, too. I only dieted for diet? four what weeks. What was your diet? Uh, psh, man, just a lot of rice and chicken, and I knew nothing about carb cycling, so I ate a lot of rice what, and what chicken. What like regular white rice? Yeah, just regular white rice. White rice. And, <laughs> it's hard to say. So I know. Yeah. White rice. Say white rice five white times. White rice. White rice. White uh, rice. Elmer white Fudd. Rice. Is white rice. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> so yeah, just rice and uh, chicken. Um, I'd go back and forth between white and brown and uh, chicken. I was I was eating um, sirloin, um, whole eggs, and just a lot of a lot of good food. Um, nothing. Too fatty. I wasn't eating no bacon. Were or your portions like big, or were they like? Oh yeah, dude. I was bringing Tupperwares like this big, and um, and you don't gain fat from that. Mm-mm. I was still pretty lean, but I wasn't lean enough because I didn't know how to dry out, and so I took a diuretic. My boss mm. at the time, um, she was competing too, so she had these diuretics, and she gave me one. What are they called? Uh, I don't know where she got it, but she gave it to me and was like, take this, it'll work. And I was like, all right, bet. Because, you know, she obviously knew what she was doing, so I was kind of following, you know, mm. her. Did it make and you poop or make you sweat? Or no, what, no, what no. It, it, just, both. it made me piss. Made you, oh, so all the water weight. Yeah, Ooh. water weight. Mm-hmm. They dehyd- you, what did you say? You what? Dry out? Dry, dry out, out dehydrate you. Yeah. But basically getting all the water out of the muscles and, you know, out from underneath the skin and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so, so yeah, that, that was an interesting time because that diuretic, it, it did its job, but with the food, the intake, I didn't know anything about carb manipulation, like I said. And so I came in too flat. Um, my muscles weren't popping and my legs looked small because, you know, I over, um, I don't want to say over dieted because my diet was only four weeks, but I kind of overdid it as far as the cardio the last couple of days. Mm. And then, um. With the whole water depletion, I didn't know what I was doing, so I took that diuretic and everything, hoping that it would, you know, make the difference. And I ended up not placing in the top five. I was like in sixth place, mm-hmm. so I still beat quite a few guys because without you know, even knowing the proper way, right? Without I didn't even do it. I didn't even know how to pose correctly. Like some poses, I probably hit pretty good. Like front double bicep, that one's pretty What's easy. That? Uh, basically, so you're standing. So everything has to be flexed. So you're flexing your calves, quads, everything, and then this is front double bicep. So oh, okay, okay. Everybody. Yeah. So they, so they call out. Gosh. They call out all the different poses. Your bicep is as big as my head. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> so see that, bro? <laughs> well, yeah, you, you got a pretty big head too, hey, so. bro. My day, dude. I need to measure my arms again because everybody's been telling me. Couldn't find it's, it. a, it's a lot of it's a lot of pressure because you're expected to you know oh, yeah. govern yourself according yeah, and, yeah, and be yeah. the best kid. But yeah. dude, I was always in trouble. I got whoopings from almost everybody in the church, bro. Yeah. All I, the adults yeah, I, because I hear a lot of pastors' yeah. kids saying that. Dude, now. like it takes a village to raise a king, and that is no joke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, there's a lot of yeah. pressure. Uh, one thing that I learned very on my my marriage. mom was the choir director, really? and I was the drummer. Yeah, yeah. my little brother played. Yeah, too. We're, yeah, we're a very musically inclined family. Even my dad plays the yeah. saxophone. Well, Sounds like my, Kenny my G. My in-laws they were missionaries for about 25 years in Mexico mm-hmm. and Puerto Rico, so. You know, it's my my wife's the oldest, and she has a, a younger brother and a mm-hmm. younger sister. So they were all like when they started their churches. Mm-hmm. You know, my my sister in law was an usher. You know what I'm saying? Like they that just that's all they had. They had to make it work. Yeah. But one thing I learned on quick in my marriage was once we were driving, and I'll never forget it. We were right there on Broadway and Wilmot, and we were married a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember what she said and what we were arguing about. And I said, but you're a pastor's kid. You know, you're a preacher's kid. You're supposed right, right. to. And, she, bro, I will never, ever, ever, ever again throw that in her face in the sense she of, went just, off on oh, you. yeah, bro. What's she like, she's like, don't even go there. Like, he's, she's like, you have no idea what it is to grow up yeah. and be a pastor's kid. The right. Pressure, I, didn't know, I didn't know your wife the was expectation. a pastor's kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. like, yeah. In our fellowship, yeah, you know, but the pressure and the expectation and mm-hmm. everything that you're so you need to do and oh man, bro, that 
that that was the first and the last time that yeah. I ever did that. Learning experience. It's all psh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The pressure that like you said, you gotta live up to an expectation. Right. Because right. your 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 parents or your mom, you know, is the right. leader. Uh, I, I, I'll, uh, and everybody knew us too. We're like we're a very popular mm-hmm. uh, family. Everybody knows us. Yeah, just outgoing. That's mm-hmm. just how we are. So I couldn't find the th- measurement, but we'll look after and we'll okay. just add it in. You know, cool, just for cool. fun. Yeah. But um, going back to to your your competition, what's one thing that you wish you would have known before that you didn't know? I know you kind of touched on I, it a little bit, but I wish I would have known to start my diet sixteen weeks out instead of four. Instead of four. Okay. Yeah, because... So it really takes that long. It really takes that long. And 16 weeks is what, three months? Four. Yeah, three four m- months. Well, about, yeah, give or take about three, four, yeah. Wow. Something like that. But yeah, it, it takes a while because you got to train and you have to train specifically, you know, in a way that allows you to build a lot of detail and definition because you want to be very muscular, but you don't want to be overly muscular so when you work out Mm -hmm. do you have a plan that you follow from somebody else or do you have your own plan that you know no just my own plan that i know everything's up here Mm -hmm. because i've been working out for such a long time to the point whereas i know you should make up so many different i i mean i know like people have told me that before but i'm just like man i've been doing this for so long everything once this episode blows up you know people are going to want a plan i know people are going to want a plan and and i got notepads and and i'll help you bro i got photoshop whoa whoa We'll, we'll make it up, you know, and you can sell it for like 10 bucks. Yeah, PDF, yeah, yeah. You know I what I mean? You. I got you. So, but no, nah, I mean, I got no problem with helping people. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, for for a long time, I've just been in it for myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I was a personal trainer at one point for a little while, but it got on my nerves after a while because it's like my my phone wouldn't wouldn't stop, uh, you know, making noise. And it just got to the point where I was just like, man, this is annoying. I don't want to. I don't want to be bothered sometimes. Like, there's times where I just want to do my thing, not worry about nobody, and just go home, chill, eat my food, and just relax. You know what? It takes a, it takes a certain type of person, um, and I mean this, you know, to be able to, because it's discipline. Mm-hmm. You got to have discipline in order to keep, it, to make that a habit. Yeah. You have to have consistency and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you also have to have a certain type of lifestyle. In. Right. So a lot of things have to fall into, not a lot of things, but certain things that I believe need to fall into place that give you that window to be able to, you to know, dedicate you yourself yeah. to, you know, because it's not like you go to an hour to the gym. I mean, I know some people do, mm-hmm. but how how much do you go? Two, three hours? Four hours? Yeah. Well, legs take me the longest mm-hmm. because your legs How long do you spend have in the gym a lot of endurance. on a daily basis? Um, on average, it it just it depends. Well, not work not your work too. schedule, but like your lifting, probably two hours minimum. Like truly two hours minimum. Yeah. Um, not even counting the warm up. Well, mm-hmm. if you do count the warm up, maybe two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. See, and um, you do that on a consistent basis. Two and a yeah. half hours add up to quite a bit a bit of time but during it, the week. It, and but it depends though, because like I'm so knowledgeable with working out that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the back is the second largest muscle group. So there's been days where I didn't have a whole lot of time Mm -hmm. and I completely destroyed my back in under an hour. Mm -hmm. And I'm sore Mm -hmm. right now because of it. (laughs) But because you have the knowledge, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it takes takes time to build up that knowledge. So then you'll you'll save time later. Yeah, Yeah, Because then you know what you're doing. Same thing with dieting. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? You'll know, hey, I need to do 16 weeks instead of four. Right. You save, right. you know. But right. um, before we get off of this topic, he mentioned steroids. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a buddy that's natty, you know, mm-hmm. and he's working out. And What's he's that? Natural, all natural. Oh, okay. Yeah. He doesn't Jim, use any. That's, that's, yeah, that's gym maybe. slang. Natty. Be like, oh, Jimmy yeah. Bonics. And, and, and you said you're natty, too. Get with too. the program, yeah. dude. Um, I'm natty, bro. What you talking about? <laughs> when you're with <laughs> organic right here. <laughs> Non-GMO right here, baby. <laughs> so when you are when you were competing, <laughs> you on were there guys swine. that took <laughs> testosterone boosters oh, or yeah. steroids in that competition? Absolutely, because it's NPC. And so NPC, What's that? well, it's just a different on, organization. Bro. You okay. got yeah. You got you got NPC, your natural bro. you got your natural organizations and you got your unnatural organization National which is the NPC. Poetry. This is where he starts, you know. And the, natural, yeah. National and, and Poetry NP- Competition. So so NPC stands for National Physique Committee. 
Same thing. And <laughs> <laughs> poetry. Well, I mean, it is it is, it is an art form. Yeah. It is an art form. Hey, there you go. Because because like because like basically this this is the <laughs> canvas. And, yep, yep. and and the different weights the and machines right are are Ooh. the uh, are the brushes Bless like those Lord. are your tools. <laughs> Bless God, boy. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So so the different uh, types of equipment that you have at your disposal is basically your tools for uh, creating the masterpiece, which is your body. Mm. And so, if, if right. used correctly, you can really build a really really great physique. So are they illegal? In a lot of in, sports, in competition, yeah. like for not in bodybuilding, no, only okay. only if it's a drug tested bodybuilding show, which uh, OCB drug test, INBA, PNBA, those three organizations drug test. I've never competed for them before. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have um, encouraged me to, but I keep hearing that it's more expensive because you have to pay for the uh, drug test, and then you have to pay to get the light detector and all that stuff. And I'm not spending all that money. Right. Like, it's bad enough I got to pay for the entry fee. Um, How much does all that stuff cost for when you were competing? Oh, man. So so you have to register every year, and it's calendar year. So if you paid for your NPC card, which is $125, um, if you paid for it in the beginning of December, after December 31st, you got to buy a whole nother one if you want to compete again for the next year. Mm. So it doesn't start from a year from when you purchase it. It's just every calendar year. And when they told me that, I was like, what? So I got to buy a nut, man. Y'all killing me, bro. And I just thought it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, all they care about is the money. But we'll get to that in a, in a moment. Yeah. Um. So anyway, um, you got to pay for the spray tan, and that's 100 bucks. Um. You can't show up sprayed? You can show up sprayed. But that's a lot more work, I bet. Yeah, like I'd rather just let them do it. Like you get out of the car and you have your body print on the car. Right, <laughs> right. You feel me? The outline. Well, well when you're when you're backstage, yeah. you have to be covered from head to toe because one of the main thing, and you got flip flops too. Because one of the main I've things noticed they don't that want, everyone has flip flops. Yeah, they don't want none of that stuff getting on the floor because oh. the girls wear high heels. Ooh, they'll, they'll slip. slip. Yeah, bring a neck. Dude. Yeah, so you want to be careful. You really want to watch out for the guys wear high heels too. <laughs> <laughs> they do, but that's a they different wear competition. They wear stilettos, bro. Nah, that's kidding. a different competition. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, oh, I'm thinking of a different competition. That's the yeah. NTC. <laughs> you think it is that's, the N- that's the NTC. You're thinking of your wife. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. All right, yeah, that's, so... Yeah, that's... Yeah. National, <laughs> that's the National Transvestite Committee. <laughs> what about... Uh, what about... <laughs> NTC. Okay. Shout, shout out to so, the... Shout out okay, to NTC. So, yeah. um, are you... Are, would you recommend are steroids bad in your opinion they can be if used improperly okay so when would be the perfect uh so opportunity or time or recommendation for using steroids or testosterone booster mm-hmm. if is you, there a difference if, steroids if you're, and testosterone yeah is there, a di- there there obviously is a difference so, what's the difference if you know okay because uh, i don't know yeah so yeah you got so you got a bunch of stuff you got hgh sarms um testosterone boosters steroids uh-huh. I don't know a whole lot about uh, SARMs or uh, HGH. Well, HGH is the human growth hormone. Right. I know it helps you recover faster and sleep better. I've taken like that, that before mm-hmm. a long time ago. Like, I wasn't even married yet. It was like eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I honestly could say I felt the difference in focus. Yeah. Um, they made it, You dropped it under your tongue, like little droplets under mm-hmm. your tongue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's the form I took. I had a friend who took uh, steroids and... His nipples started feeling really tender, mm-hmm. so he had to buy estrogen blockers. Yeah. Oh. So, so he was growing chichis. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. So like, gosh. so like, a lot of times, what happens to guys is is um, <laughs> they'll they'll overuse it and they'll use it improperly because you got to get a blood test, you got to look at your levels, you got to have a doctor. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Mm. You got to cycle. You got to have your time where you cycle off too. Mm. You know what I mean? Um. And if you take too much for too long, then your body will stop producing free testosterone. So your natural levels will go down. So if you do get off of steroids, mm. then it's like you're going to need some hormone therapy. Yeah, like because, with anything that's synthetic or... Yeah, or, and there's or that's really, why the nuts shrink yeah. too. And there's yeah. bad... Yeah, yeah. And because there's bad side effects. That's one of the so side effects. So then you'll effects. need a smaller... Uh, 
mm-hmm. speedo speedo yeah eventually and like so there's a lot of, there's a lot We're of stupid trying to save you money bro <laughs> so there's a lot of there's a, it's, it's a lot of stupid stereotypes out there <laughs> I'm, I'm trying well, to save you money here. Like one of the biggest stereotypes is people. People are so ignorant, especially in America, bro. Like yeah. people, oh, steroids make your penis shrink, and yeah. that's not true. No, it's not, bro. It's not. It, if it, anything, it makes it. Yeah, and the reason I say that was because I was taking tribulus, yeah, tribulus terrestris for a while, right, right, uh, and that's also a libido enhancer. Yes, but yes. during why the, were you taking it though? I was I wanted to go on a testosterone booster first before I went to synthetic testosterone because mm-hmm. all my brothers have always juiced and mm-hmm. out of all my brothers I'm the only one that never did and I was kind of scared. Yeah. Only because one of my brothers ended up getting an enlarged heart. Yeah, it makes everything grow. Yeah, so Oh, really? Uh-huh. No, no, yeah, except seriously. For the, except for your So his testicles. heart his heart was going to So your my, heart can grow. Oh, cuz it's a muscle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz you can you can literally speed up your cancer cells. Oh my god! That's yeah, get can- yeah, yeah no, it, it can be dangerous, bro. Yeah. It, it, it. So, so I was like, but my brothers were always like, "Come on, man, you'll be good. I'll show you how to do it." And mm-hmm. I was just like, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try out the testosterone boosters first and see how I feel." But what I was taking, it's called uh, Tribex ninety. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be like, uh, inf- it has like this Bulgarian plant in it. It's supposed to be natural. It's a natural testosterone booster, but it's also a libido enhancer. Yeah. So I did notice a slight uh, difference in the gym, mm-hmm. uh, but more libido. Yeah. Where I was like, "Whoa, where did you come from?" Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, dude. Like, dude, like just just taking <laughs> care, of, just just taking oh, care shit. of yourself. Is yeah, out. Boy. Well, hello there. <laughs> he started wearing more gray sweats. <laughs> I did actually. He wore <laughs> speedos underneath his sweats for no reason. Yeah, stop so, flexing. So, yeah. stop, stop flexing. <laughs> I'm not even flexing. <laughs> it wasn't even upper body. Day, no, it was legs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sperma pump. No, but um, <laughs> next time so, do uh, upper body before. Before we uh, do this episode, gotcha, yeah, got gotcha. you. That way the arms are bulging out. Yep, the traps. The tra- oh, I'm known for my traps, actually. Dude, his traps are beast. Yeah, my traps. Are you stupid. don't work out traps either. You know what traps are, right? Bro, I got I traps don't, at the house. So bro. I don't do I don't do shrugs or got, upright rows. Dude, I, got, I got traps yeah, all over church right now. I don't I don't like upright rows because they put your shoulders in a compromising position, and I've noticed impingement in my shoulder whenever I did them. Mm-hmm. So whenever I, did I traps. Do, these? No, up upright rows. Oh, okay. so this is so. What do you recommend? Not a natural movement. So, what do you re- recommend instead oh, wow. of doing upright uh, rows? Just you know, shoulder presses, so um, shrugs. Like that one? Yeah, right yeah. I, I to work on your traps. I, mm. I usually do the shrugs, uh, but I also do um, the one where you come up all the way up like that. Lateral raises. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of different variations yeah. of lateral yeah, yeah, yeah. raises so the, too. Yeah, those are the ones I I don't like doing the what is that called. Upright rows. Yeah, I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't like that one. It yeah, is very uncomfortable. Like it made my shoulders really big, and it and it made my traps bigger, and which is cool, but still, it it puts your shoulders in a compromising position. So you're I more just, prone to injury that way. Yeah. So have you ever uh, gotten injured while working out? Yeah, a few times. Yeah. And uh, what was your experience as far as recovery goes? Like how how did Ooh. you how did you approach that? Well, the first injury was the rotator cuff. I hear that's a nasty one. Bro. Oh my god! Like, dude. So, I ignored it for a little bit, and um, let me know. Hmm? sorry. If that you dies, go. just let me know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So I ignored it for a little while, and I kept training. Went to boxing practice. Um, uh, went to football camp. Kept lifting weights and, and that's, stuff. And that's like right here, right? That pain. Yeah. That you it's get like right. right yeah. Yeah. Okay. And. I just kept ignoring it and ignoring it until it got so bad that that burning feeling, oh, my God, I'll never forget that. That burning feeling was just so painful and so annoying to the point where it kept me up at night. I could only raise my hand this high. I I was just very limited in my mobility and range of motion Mm -hmm. in this arm. And then I ended up telling my mom one day, like, hey, mom, I think I really messed myself up. We need to go and, and get a CAT scan or something. Or not a CAT scan, but like an MRI or yeah, something yeah, yeah. to see what's going on. And so she made the appointment, and I went to go see the family doctor, uh, Dr. Chloride. Funny guy. This dude was hilarious. Chloride? Chloride. Dr. Chloride. Shout yeah. out, Dr. Chloride. Shout out, Dr. Chloride. Um, 
and hopefully hopefully he's still he's still around uh because he was a great guy I, I really admired that man he was awesome um but yeah so he gave me the referral to see this man a uh, short asian man named dr pack or Pac or however you pronounce Tupac. that yeah we'll just call him too no i'm playing <laughs> nah so so he Pac-Man. so he performed <laughs> what's called you. the uh Episcopic surgery, I believe is what it is. Oh, so he did and the surgery. He did a surgery on you. Yeah, yeah, the Asian doctor. Yeah, and man, this dude was amazing. Is that is that where like they may do a hole and they just go through that hole, or do they actually make so, a huge incision? So it was four incisions. So the first. Oh yeah, one the holes. Yeah. Was right here. That was the biggest one, and then, then right there. up here, up here. Yeah, that's orthoscopic. Orthoscopic. Thank you, thank you. I was hoping one of y'all would correct me if I was wrong. Um, I'm buff up here. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the only place I'm buff, bro. <laughs> He's got so, a six pack on his brain like that. I'm, buff. <laughs> I'm actually flexing right now. <laughs> his so, ears got biceps. That was that was gas right there. Dang. So <laughs> so they went in and repaired me. Oh my gosh, dude! Like there was a muscle. So what was the uh, procedure? Like what do they do? I have no idea because I was on, I was bro. under yeah I was under <laughs> anesthesia, so I don't know. He's a, I was under anesthesia, man. <laughs> Can you walk like, us like, through that yeah, when process? They, when they, when they, when what they, did it feel like? Yeah, so, so, what happened? so, so, what so when they woke me up, the nurses. So when they woke me up, the nurses were flirting with me. They were like, "Hey, you've got a lot of muscles, Mister. You got muscles everywhere. Like we, were, we were just checking you out. Like, you what's like, that what muscle? Like, were you wow, touching what's that hard? Asleep? Like, wow, what's that hard thing right there? Oh, that's a muscle. And I was just like, I looked at my mom. Like, what hard thing are they talking about? Weren't you twelve? What no, were, I was uh, what were they 16. Ta- what were they oh, talking about? Yeah. I I don't know, bro. I asked them. I'm like, what muscle are y'all talking about? Was your mom in there to like make sure of your well-being? While you yeah, were she was there. Okay. So no, was okay I think she... I don't remember if she was there or if she left for a little bit and then came back. Mm. I don't remember. I just know them nurses was on me, boy. I was, and I was eating it up, too. I didn't care. <laughs> um, you were 16. <laughs> yeah, I was 16, bro. So I ain't Money-making machine. With libido. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, I... <laughs> Well, we gonna keep it G rated, so I ain't gonna say nothing. But um, <laughs> I appreciate, but yeah, appreciate that, was, that, brother. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, much you, love. Yeah, you know, just we gonna keep it because you know it's for the kids. You know what I'm saying? You know. Yep. So I'm send um, this to uh, Zay Zay. Right, <laughs> little little Zay Zay, <laughs> little Zay Zay. Yeah, no, my my uh, daughter watches the podcast. Oh, she does. Mm-hmm. How old is she? She's 11, going on 25. Yeah. 11. Oh. 11 yep. going on 25. Yeah. Right? Yep. Mm. She in thinks here. she's much older. She's older in here. Yeah. Man, I got a six year old niece. She's six going on 25 or something, 28, something like that. So, yeah. I'm so she, glad I had a boy yeah, the first she, time. Just because I don't think I'm mentally ready to deal with mm-hmm. a woman or a, a girl or a, a little girl. Man, you my know what niece, I mean? my niece be predicting my phone calls when I call my mom back home. My niece be knowing. She'd be like, Is that Uncle Juju? See, I knew he was gonna call. He always called around the same time. That's your nickname, and I, and Juju? I know yeah. Juju. My whole family called me that, man. Shout out to well, your family now, yeah, bro. Even, Juju, shout out even, to right Uncle Juju. Even, even even close yeah. friends and his like, niece. I'm a Hispanic Jew. <laughs> well, no, I really am. You what are? Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> what did you say? I said I'm a Hispanic Jew. Oh, all right. I'm he's, right. A, he's a green bean. He's a green. No, bean. No, my kids are green beans. Oh, okay. you know what a green bean is? Hell no. Nah. So, <laughs> so my I was my about to say, eh, yeah. no, it's because my my um. My, all right, so so yeah, my daughter was like, um, "Daddy, you know what am I?" And I was like, "Well, you're American." She's like, "Well, some of the kids in my school were asking me what I was, and I wasn't sure how to answer that question." Mm-hmm. So I said, "Well," I was like, um, "I said you can't really say you're Mexican because you weren't born in Mexico, and neither was I. You know, we're Mexican descent." I was like, "But um, you could say you're Hispanic, and um, let's see. Well, let's see. I'm Hispanic, and your mom is Irish." I said, so I guess that makes you a green bean. Mm-hmm. And she started laughing. And ever since then, my daughter <laughs> says she's a green, oh, bean. green bean. And then I I, uh, I know this one chick who's half German, half Mexican, and she told me she was a, a beaner snitchel. <laughs> <laughs> a what? A beaner snitchel. Wow. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> that is hilarious. That's pretty creative right there. So, so you wake up from surgery... And how did you like 
what was your road to recovery from there? How long did it take till you started getting back into the Ooh, I was the gym? Sore. Ooh, I was so sore after that surgery. I was probably sore for about a week. A week? Yeah, it just yeah, it just felt just really sore. And um, you know, when it when it came time to take a bath, it was like, oh my god, every day was just so it was hard taking a bath, man, because like my mom. She would help me take it off and stuff. The and cast? This, yeah, the sling. Oh, the it was sling? A, it was a sling, yeah. And I had that stupid little rubber ball right there on the side. And, um, like, the way it was, like, wrapped around my body, and it had, like, the cushion, like, right oh, here yeah. in between. And I remember it was, like, all taped up right there. And so, like, she would help me take off the sling and stuff, and... And then, you know, I would get in the tub and I would just be like, all right, mom, get out. Don't look at me. She'd be like, boy, I used to change your diapers. And I'm like, yeah, that was then. That's, that's different. Get out of here. And she's like, hey, she's, like, she's like, boy, shut up. Just let me know when you need your back to be washed. I'm like, all right, cool. So, yeah, yeah. It, was just, yeah it, was just, it was just weird, bro. Like, I was so used to just having my right arm because I'm right-handed. So, oh, yeah. it just, it killed me. So, when I went to school, you know, all my teachers were pretty easy on me. Um, and I had to, like, learn how to write with my left hand or just do the best that I could. So, you know, a lot of times, and I couldn't sit in the desk, so a lot of times I would just sit on top of the desk or just wherever I wanted, however mm -hmm. I wanted, because was, I was just so uncomfortable. And uh, they prescribed me, um, uh, what is that stuff called? It was a painkiller. It was a... Vicodin? Yeah, Vicodin. That's what they gave me. And... Um, that seems to be like the universal. Yeah, first. dude, I was I was popping mollies all the time, bro. Like mollies, I was so miserable. No, what I, I mean, not literally molly, oh. mollies, but you know, like, <laughs> I was popping them things all the time, boy. Because that that was just in a lot of pain. I was just sore. Yeah, that's so. how I got addicted to Percocets for a while. Mm -hmm. That's how a lot of people get addicted to per, to just well, painkillers, is mm -hmm. at like post surgery mm -hmm. or stuff like that. I didn't get it. I didn't get addicted. Um, I really, I truly didn't start smoking weed until senior year. I tried it junior year, and it just made me so paranoid. I was just like, man, my mom's gonna know. And then my homies and everybody was just like, nah, nah, you good? She ain't gonna know. And then like my boy's girl, she's all talking to me and and just. Just like you know how girls, they just they just they touch you and they relax you and they calm you down. They got them sweet voices. Well, yeah. some of them, and she that's just that like, motherly. Yeah, instinct she just she just, have, she just leaned me back and was like, "It's okay, just breathe, just just chill, just relax." And and she put the visine drops in my eyes real quick. I didn't even see it coming. She just boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, she set me straight. You know what I'm saying? She she made me feel real comfortable and um and uh, they sprayed a little bit of smell good on me. Not too much though, because then. You know, you don't want to wear it too much because then your mom going to know something's up. And I'm just like, but she don't know. She's she's never, like, had any type of indication that I wanted to smoke or, or anything like that. So it's like, you know, it'll be fine. And that's what my homie was telling me. Like, yeah, you'll be cool, bro. And then senior year. Um, a lot of stuff happened senior year. My mom was in three bad marriages. Um, the first marriage was my pops. And like I said, they got married young. But, um... My dad's a good dude, you know. I, I respect him. I'll never speak ill of my father because that's my guy, you know. Mm. Um, but her second husband, on the other hand, I, I really don't like that dude. Even to this day, I really, really don't like mm. that dude. Her third husband, same thing. I really just, I can't stand that dude. I really, really don't like him at all. Um, he He did a lot of horrible things, you know. And so did, you know, her second husband and um we'll save that for another topic we'll get into that later but um you know i started smoking because of a lot of stress that i was under mm. you know and it was just helping me chill and just mellow out you know what i mean like you know we were driving around in my car at the time and we had like a couple of blunts in there and my boys they were just like hey man you need to smoke and I'm just like, yeah, I need to calm down because I'm ready to hurt somebody. So they passed it to me, and I hit it, and I immediately. <sighs> I, How old were you? Um, 18. Okay. 18, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you know, I was doing that. And um, for the longest, I was able to proudly say I've never smoked or drink, even though I've been around drugs, you know, when I was younger and stuff. Um, you know, my dad was a dope dealer, um, and then. 
my mom's second husband after him was a dope dealer. He sold all types of drugs and stuff. He was like real heavily known in the streets too. And my dad, he was real deep in it too. Like he had his hand in everything, mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it was, it was crazy. And, um, you know, I even dabbled a little bit in, in the selling drugs game myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't do it for a long time, but, you know. Yeah, he's, I just, he's dabbled in that too, man. Yeah, You guys yeah. have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do, we do. Yeah, we it's do. crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. I, I know, you're saying all these stories, I'm like. Yeah, yeah. There's a the, mirror the, right the, here. The crazy exes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It all started there. But yeah, you're so, both bald now. I was gonna. <laughs> man, I've been. I started. I started shaving my head. Well, you know, all this in the front is gone. Well, Ain't he no just shaved his head for recently too. So, oh That's yeah, I'm, I'm clowning, you I'm clowning on him. Hair? No, I can't. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Can. Can. It's just because I'm just no, clowning on him. No, I, I didn't. Yeah, I was. I was doing a fade and I messed up. Oh. And I went too high. And I was like, ah, I'm not even gonna try to fix it. And I'm Man, a barber, happens. dude. He could have hit me up. You could have hit him up. Oh, I already owe the money. That don't matter. Uh, just tax it up. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Inflation. Yeah, yeah. No, that's you're just good, like because 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 I, I still smoke. No, nah, but you guys have a lot in common. We do, we do, we do. Well, that you know, it, it's our generation, bro, and that's yeah. that's the life because they've been in church mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah, you know. Yeah, he was it, born it, in the fellowship, right? Raised, uh, yeah, born and raised. Me too. I, I I didn't come until I was about 13, 12, mm -hmm. so I'm pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a little bit. I, t I shared a little bit with you. I, I smoked weed when I was like ten to like yeah. twelve. Right. I drank a little bit, but that put a bad taste in my mouth because yeah. I didn't want to do it. I was kind of forced into it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he, on the other hand, you know, he didn't start coming to what your twenties, sixteen, seventeen. Well, I, I started because I didn't grow up like. Uh, religious or anything i i started coming to church uh yeah i was a teenager one of my uncles became a christian mm -hmm. and and he started ministering to me yeah and so i w went to the door which is the church that we go to he invited me to a, a hip-hop concert mm -hmm. and this is like late 90s and i'm, I'm i didn't know that churches did hip-hop mm -hmm. so to me that was like a huge deal i was like this church is cool. You know, like if I ever go to a church, this is going to be the church. Mm -hmm. So when I was a kid, I, I grew up, I mean, I was raised by my grandparents and, and I was like in and out of juvie and stuff. And, and when I was locked up and in group homes and I, I would always hear the gospel because mm -hmm. there was always people going in to preach the gospel and it always caught my attention, Yeah, you know, and growing up the way I grew up, because I always felt like lonely you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't really have... Neglect. Yeah. So when I would hear that and they would say, Jesus loves you and God cares about you, like, it kind of spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Because I remember thinking, like, is there really a God? And does he really love me? Does he mm -hmm. really care about me? You know what I mean? So as a young kid, that's why I was so drawn to to Christianity, to the church, you know? But it wasn't something that I was that I had to do, like some people who grow up in church are forced to do. Right. You know, right. so I know I was a rare thing for a lot of people because mm -hmm. at my age I wanted to go to church. Mm -hmm. And where kids who grew up in church that were my age, they were only going because their parents were making them go. Exactly. You know what I mean? My mom so, had us involved in everything, bro. We sung in the choirs, the kids' mm -hmm. choirs and everything, bro. I was I grew up a church musician. I still play for the church mm. all my life. So. And, and, yeah, and that's the thing, how I grew up too. I was the, in plays. I was. So, I'm gonna ask the question, bro, because I feel like I need to. Go ahead. I know. I remember I was talking to you at the gym, mm -hmm. and you were telling me. You say, "Hey, man, I believe in Christ, mm -hmm. you know, but there's still some things. Oh that yeah, I have to let go of. Yeah, there's still some things I gotta let go of, man. So my question is, what's holding you back? Me. <laughs> it ain't nobody but me, bro. Yeah. Um, really, it's just it's it's lust. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, there's there's so many beautiful women, so many beautiful women everywhere. You, you know, know that that never goes yeah. away. It'll never go away. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and it doesn't. It, you it's know, true. You, yeah. it, it, it's true. It don't matter. You could be married for. You could talk to guys yeah. who've been married for forty, fifty years. You yeah. know, yeah. It, that never goes away. But one thing that that really 
caught my attention again, right? Going back to the mental thing, mm-hmm. and you, you know, we joked a little bit about right now, yeah. the, the National Transvestite Committee, <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, just like you were talking about how you know your body and yeah. you have to work, you you went from finding out you have to go from a four week to a sixteen week, mm-hmm. but there's certain things that you did the week before mm-hmm. to get your body right uh to where you wanted it to be right yeah. i think it's just as important to recognize that about your mind as well yeah right That's to true. where and your soul you That's translate yeah. that mm. right yeah the diet that you the intake diet that you give your body in order to look ripped and yeah. but not too ripped right look veiny but not too veiny right right is now kind of training it and saying, okay, what diet am I giving my my mind? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. That's powerful. You know what I'm saying? It's like the intake. Yeah. So you talk about lust. Yeah. Right? Lust is, okay, who are you following on Instagram? Who are you following on Facebook? Oh, my God. Right? Am, so I, following, am I following people that are feeding yeah. that lust? Right? Yeah. The Bible says you need to be a good servant with what? God is giving you, yeah. right, or with what your possessions. Like I ain't right? gonna lie, man. Like so, there's, there's a lot of females that I've been unfollowing and mm-hmm. deleting off of social mm-hmm. media yeah. because because of the lust. Yeah. Because yeah. you know a, a lot of times they they either hit me up mm-hmm. um, with a with a friend request mm-hmm. or they or I notice they followed me or whatever. And some of them even pop in my DMs. I'd mm-hmm. be like, so shorties are popping in DMs now. <laughs> Let me leave you on. I'm gonna leave you on. I'm gonna leave you on. Written on plan. And it's so crazy that it's 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 such a huge part of of our culture now Mm -hmm. that you know back in the Bible times you had Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah. You know, and they were you know they were doing some nasty stuff, bro. Ungodful things. And, And what did God do? He burnt those, yeah, yeah. You know, he burnt them down to the ground. Not even a grain of sand left. We now live in a time. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah, you know where couple swinging is mm-hmm. such a natural thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm sure you've seen it. I don't know if you've ever made a Tinder or anything, but I remember nah. being on Tinder, and there was couples on there looking for other couples, mm-hmm. or we're a couple. My husband and I are looking for another man, mm-hmm. or you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh, yeah. it, 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 it's it. It's become so natural where yeah. I even have friends that aren't Christian mm-hmm. and they they talk about it like it's something natural. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it spices up the relationship, you know. <laughs> and, and it so destroys, bro. Th- this is the thing with when I because, you know, like I was I was telling you earlier, I didn't finish. You know, I, I went to the church when I was a teenager and stuff. But as I mm-hmm. got older, I stopped going and I got into other stuff like new age philosophy, science, yeah, yeah. and I lost my faith in Christianity, mm-hmm. you know, and I kind of just my life was more about me, mm-hmm. you know, like this whole message of self-worth and self-love that everyone preaches. Now there's all these motivational speakers. Yeah, and, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and it makes sense, you mm-hmm. know, but if you think about it, it it kind of goes against what the Bible teaches right? because we need to humble ourselves and we need to make God the center of our lives, not us. Because the Bible says, it even says it in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. They'll be lovers of, of money. Mm -hmm. And we already live in that time where everyone on social media is like, Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Posting money and all types of stuff. Like, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And and it's almost like a competition. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I just got this job. I'm making this much money. And, I was mm-hmm. caught up in that hype yeah. where I, I I loved being single during the time that I was single because yeah. I had all these girls, bro. Mm-hmm. And here I am still a single parent. I've always been a good dad. I've always took care of my kids. But, dude, I had girls in and out of my apartment, bro. And my daughter sometimes saw that. Man, that's why I'm glad I ain't got no kids, you know, bro. And, and my neighbors used to be like, dude, you got this one, that one. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, But um, I remember... I remember just being so unhappy, bro. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I'd get lonely and I'd hit up a chick. Mm-hmm. And then, but there was really no co- real connection there. It right. was all about the sex. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's about and, lust. Yeah. yeah. That's what and, it was. And, and I remember when I got, you know, I, I came because I was, I got to a point where, 
you know, I wanted to take my life and stuff. And I had a supernatural experience yeah. out of desperation. I reached out to God and that's how I came back to the faith, yeah. which was almost two years ago now. Right. So uh, I can't believe it's been that that long. Dude. It's going by quick, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I remember coming to church mm -hmm. and feeling like the outcast because I'm watching he's married, he's married. And I'm just thinking like I like three weeks ago, I slept with like four four different chicks man you know what i mean and i'm like and these dudes have been married to the same woman like yeah. i i felt completely like from a different world mm -hmm. you know and like everyone is so innocent and i'm almost like trying to put up a wall because i don't want people to know like the lifestyle that i've right, been living right, you know what right, i mean like right. I, I dude i drank every day i was an alcoholic dude mm -hmm. like i i i you know, and, and I was all about making money and and trying to look my best and look good and meet mm. different chicks. And, and I always in my head told myself, well, I'm going to meet the right one. I'm going to meet the right one. But that never happened. Yeah. I was just going through chicks, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and now being a Christian, it took a while to let go of a lot of that stuff. It took me a mm. while to stop drinking. It took me a while to even stop fornicating yeah. because it was such a natural thing for me. Like, oh, I want to get laid. I'm going to hit up this chick. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And when, right. You, and when I gave my life to God, it was like, whoa, I can't do these things no right. more. Right. And it's like, oh, snap. You know, and it, dude, it was really hard, bro. It so was what's, really hard. What, what's different now, though? Like, what do you... So, Where do you find so, so your here's fulfillment what I, now? So he, well, here's what I did because a lot of people say I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that you, when you make a decision to follow Jesus, that you got to polish yourself up mm -hmm. to be able to come to God. And nah, it's not like that. Right. He's going to polish you up. Yeah, exactly. You come as you are. Yeah, because mm -hmm. church people are normal people too. Even though a lot of them like to make it seem like they're holier than thou. Like, like I mean, let's be mm -hmm. real. There's a lot of church yeah. people who they think that they're better than other people just because they're a church goer or they're they self-righteous yeah, yeah self-righteous yeah. and yeah. i hate it like there's yeah. been times where i've literally i've argued with christians and i've even like almost gotten physical mm -hmm. with people in church mm -hmm. because they're so judgmental mm -hmm. and i'm just like you call yourself a christian and you sitting here judging me doesn't the bible say not to judge only God can judge me. So why are you messing with me? Mm -hmm. Like, like I do. You know, one, one, yeah, there's I'm with. a human tendency to when people call you out or mm -hmm. people t tell the truth, mm -hmm. there's something in you, right? It's like, wait a minute, like yeah, like how you, you gonna like how you gonna not, call me out yeah. and you and you ain't yeah. doing right? Well, but but you know? what I'm saying is mm -hmm. like me when before I came back to Christ or not really came back, but before I came back to church and really gave my life to Christ, mm -hmm. people witnessed to me on the streets. Or in the mall, mm -hmm. and I would get mad not because they were judging me, but because they were telling the truth. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> right. I knew that what I was, the lifestyle that I was living was mm -hmm. bad, and you didn't want to hear it, and I didn't want to hear it. Right. So it's not so much that we get mad when people, because I, we've all been there, right? Yeah. Or you to judge me, but I think I know for a fact, at least in mm -hmm. my life, is I would get mad at the individual for calling me out. Mm -hmm. And calling me out, and rightly so, mm -hmm. you know, if you're fornicating and somebody comes out and says, hey, you're fornicating, that's wrong, you're going to go to mm -hmm. hell if you die. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're judging me. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. Right. You know what right, I'm saying? Like, right. You know, God is well, God. Well, see, you know they saying? would, so. a lot of times, like, them certain people, they do it in a way where it's just like, they they are judging you, and there there is they're no, not coming at you with love. Yeah, they're not yeah, coming yeah, at yeah, you with love. It's like legal, yeah, legalistic difference. people yeah. who feel like they're holier than thou. Yeah, and exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a, those are the type of yeah, people, and you can feel that tone. That's right, yeah. Yeah. and you yes. can see it. Yeah. Yes. One thing I was gonna say though about that scripture, and you can mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but I've always leaned to this. Mm -hmm. it says you know, be careful with the measure of. Uh, that you use when you judge because you will be judged with that same measure against yes. you. And so what I what I read when I what I think about when I read that is the heart that you have towards that person when you're mm -hmm. judging is going to be the same. So it doesn't say do not judge. What it says is be careful how you judge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're saying, "Hey man, uh you need to fix this." Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it to you because I care. Mm -hmm. I'm in the right because then someone else is going to tell me, "Hey, you need to fix this." And they're going to really care. But yeah. if I say, bro, man, look at you. You're fake. 
you know, and I'm and I'm and I'm spitting hate at you yeah. in the I'm church. I'm roast you, boy. Right? No, I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If I say that, yeah, I'm gonna get that same type of judgment from God right. or from somebody else with right. with with a judgmental spirit. But 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 yeah. the thing is yeah. that I was trying to get to, and you know, to get to your question, uh, was I just said, God, I need you, and if you're real, mm-hmm. I need you to show me, mm-hmm. and I I didn't stop doing anything that i was doing i still kept drinking i still kept fornicating but i genuinely from the heart began to seek god Mm -hmm. i started reading the bible i started praying i started coming to church and little by little as i was truly seeking god from the heart Mm -hmm. after a while god was like david it's time to give this up Mm -hmm. david now it's time to give this up because the closer i was getting to god Mm -hmm. the more god was revealing things to me right and and as i'm seeking and i'm entering the presence of god and i'm experiencing something that i this peace this overwhelming peace and really getting to know the love that god has for us and i'm like man like i went my entire life missing out on this yeah he says i will keep you in perfect peace As long as you keep your mind on me. And I know I'm not saying that word for word, mom, because she probably going to watch this. <laughs> she's like, but, she's like, comments, you but missed that it's, scripture. It's, 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 something, it's something like that. Come on, it's something you like that. Up. Come on, it's you, something, you. It, it, It's something along those lines. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, that, and I remember, I remember because I, I was an Uber driver for a while when I first started coming to church. I was doing Uber and Lyft. I was a translator and then I didn't I wanted to work at my own you know my own schedule whenever yeah. I wanted to. So I started doing that full time for a little bit. But I remember I would I was already coming to church and stuff, but at night I worked to like a certain time I'd take a long break mm-hmm. and I'd go to the bars and I'd have some drinks or sometimes I'd pick up some people and they'd be like, "Hey, you're pretty cool, man. Let me buy you a drink." Mm-hmm. And I'd get off and I'd have drinks with them and stuff. And to me, I I you know, I would justify it by like, "Well, drinking's not a sin. Jesus yeah. drank wine. He turned water into why is it a sin?" Yeah. You know. And I didn't argue with anyone, but that was just what I would tell myself. You know, mm-hmm. like, whatever, I don't care. You know, so, and I remember one day, one night, actually, I, I went into uh, Mr. Head's right there on um, 4th and 6th. Mm-hmm. You know what that's at? And I went I in there. I about that place all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard about it. I went in there. I ordered a, a, a big pint of beer. I went out to the back. And I, I had quit smoking a while ago, but I this girl was smoking right next to me and I kind of craved the cigarette so I said hey can I bum a cigarette off of you so I got a cigarette and I and I I'm smoking and I'm drinking the beer and, and you're I'm already smoking. a Christian at this and time. I'm already a Christian I had mm-hmm. I had already been in the church for about I want to say a month and a half two months yeah coming to church faithfully you know right uh and I just remember I didn't hear a voice but it felt like God like zoomed in on me and he's like what are you doing and I remember like I'm looking at these girls twerking and like everyone's there and I I got so like convicted and I and I thought to myself like where I was and why did I come to God Mm -hmm. and what did God rescue me from and what was the whole reason and purpose of me coming to the bars bottom The, the 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 truth was because I wanted to get laid you know yeah. what I mean? I wanted to find a shorty that I could take home. Yeah. You know, and so God, like he he told me, he's like, what are you doing? And I remember I was like, man, I couldn't even finish that beer, dude. I was so convicted. Mm-hmm. And I, I threw the cigarette in the, in, the, in the pint of beer and I walked out, dude. And I was in the patio. I walked out of there and I couldn't do it again. I couldn't do it anymore, dude. Every time I would go to try to drink, I could, I could just feel it. God mm-hmm. was like, David, what are you doing? And not so much because drinking is a sin, because drinking is not. Okay, right. it's being drunk. But I had a problem with alcohol. Mm. You know, so for me, you know, God was trying to tell me something like, David, you need to give this up. Yeah. Because you know where this takes you. And it's true. Yeah. I get a couple drinks in me and I... I start feeling some type of way and I yeah. get away from people and I go call up a girl. Yeah. That's me. But that's why it's it's important too because I remember Pastor Warner preached a sermon on this on, on, on drinking alcohol. He said, it's not a sin to drink 
but it is a sin to 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 be a drunk right but he said as a christian i believe that it would be better to not even open that door right because it could lead to so many things you know so an yeah, encounter, yeah. when you encounter god thing automatically things change uh, it, it, a genuine encounter with jesus christ things are going to change mm-hmm. absolutely and like you i look said, different like i was saying is you know some people yeah people are going to notice it some yeah. people can handle social media some people can't handle social media mm-hmm. some people right. can have an instagram and they're okay whereas other people can't have an instagram because they know themselves right, right. they're going to be following women or they're going to be looking at stupid things right, right online right. things like that some people can have zero filters on their phones yeah some people need filters on their phones you know what i'm saying it's your own personal relate that's what it is it's a personal relationship with jesus christ Mm -hmm. that will change Mm -hmm. your life that will change your habits and it works from the inside out it's not the outside in it's the inside out Mm -hmm. david is different with me it was different miguel it's different with you it's going to be different you know what i'm saying so and a genuine encounter with jesus christ will change your life there's Mm -hmm. no way that you can have a genuine encounter with Christ yeah. and something in your life isn't turned upside down. And that's the thing. Yeah. I guess the thing that we're all getting at right here is none of us are finished products. Right, right. You know what I mean? God is always going to be working. I've been up and down. Yeah. I, w- the term for me would be a backslidden state. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I've been at that high point where I'm all about God and I'm, I'm doing good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm cool. You, know, you, can, you can feel the Holy Spirit coming off of me. And then there, there's times where I'm just I'm just like, you know, every other word, F and stuff, and I'm smoking. Mm-hmm. And I've never really had a problem with alcohol. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, just smoking weed and stuff and, and fornicating. Yeah. When I was a bouncer, that was when I was at my worst in fornicating, mm-hmm. bro. Because all that money I was making and mm-hmm. then all the girls. Yeah. the gir- Man, the girls love bouncers. <laughs> well, yeah, and they're girls all drunk bou- too, bro. Yeah, and they <laughs> drunk. They see that security on the back of your shirt. And then it's like, I'm built. I don't look. Bro, I've had so many people, females, gay guys, like just so many people tell me, like, yo, I don't know anybody built as perfect as you. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not even They haven't met me That's why <laughs> <laughs> But no nah, Like no, people People overwhelm me With compliments There's people right. that have Stopped me In the mall In Walmart Many different places People all Are always stopping me Talking about how I look And stuff mm-hmm. And handsome And 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 you know I'm pretty humble about it For the most part I don't mm-hmm. think I'm better Than anybody Because mm-hmm. of the way I look mm-hmm. It doesn't matter Like I, I love being around people. I love talking to people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And and you know that's I'm very outgoing. You and know? I and I think I think I get the feeling that once you fully surrender, mm-hmm. God's going to use that. Yeah, I want Him to use. You know that. what I mean? Because that, yeah. because yeah. I wanna I wanna liberate mm-hmm. black people, and mm-hmm. I, and I and I mean just people of color in general, not just one set group. I want I want to help everybody who's been oppressed because we all obviously know what that feels like. You know what I'm mm. saying? Um, uh, they've killed so many of our people. They don't want us to know who we are. They've stolen our identity from us. And, you know, they they just want to keep us separated. They make us foreigners in our own homes in, in a lot of cases. You know what mm. I'm saying? And in, in my case, I have no home. I have no identity. I don't know who my ancestors are. I know we originated in Africa as the aboriginal people of this planet, but I don't know who my tribe is. I don't know. I've wondered that for myself, too. Like, yeah. who are my ancestors? You know, where, where, where do I come from? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 23 and me, isn't that what it's called? There's 23 and me. There's, there's, there's Ancestry.com. Ancestry. Yeah, Ancestry. yeah. 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 There's, there's a few. Yeah. But here's the thing, too, bro, is I, I used to struggle with that, too. Mm. I, I grew up with a lot of anger. I used to hate white people, dude. Yeah. I hated white people. Right. Uh, and I went after white girls for that purpose, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but, I, and I don't hate anybody now, dude. Like, when I see a white person, I mean, obviously, my kids are half white, mm. you know, but I don't, I don't look at a white person and automatically think, like, oh, that dude's white. Yeah, I used to think like that. Right. You know, like where I felt like I had to put my guard up, you know, because I automatically felt racially insecure. Like this person thinks he's they're better than me. Yeah. You know, I I did feel that way for a long time growing Mm up, Mm -hmm. but I've let that go. But my identity is in Christ. 
when we die, your spirit isn't black, white, brown. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right. And this life is temporary, mm-hmm. but eternity, that's forever. Forever. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. So, so I feel like certain things like that, like the devil uses that to mm-hmm. bring division. Yeah. The devil uses, you know, things that happened a long time ago. Yeah, our people were oppressed. Right. Our people right. suffered. Like right. I remember I hated Catholicism because mm-hmm. Catholicism was forced on our people in, in, in Latin America mm-hmm. and, and the, the the Native Americans that didn't accept Jesus, mm-hmm. they would burn their feet until they decided to accept Jesus. And if they didn't want to accept Christ, they would kill him. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's why I kind of got away from Christianity for such a long time because I would say that's the white man's religion. Mm -hmm. and they forced that on our people but when i experienced god supernaturally Mm -hmm. it was like god removed the veil and allowed me to see what i was failing to see that's why it is important to walk in the spirit yeah because without the holy spirit we will be blinded exactly exactly you're exactly right um because it it really just makes you view the world so much differently than well you you don't view it through your eyes anymore Mm -hmm. that's what it is you you start to um, see things through uh, the God in you, mm-hmm. and you yeah. start to have a, a, a certain type of love towards everybody. Mm-hmm. And I, I genuinely do love people and care about people. Um, I just I can't stand stupid people that don't have common sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there with you, bro. <laughs> um, what I want you to do is shout out your uh, Instagram, okay? Uh, just so they can follow you um, for all you know your fitness, your uh, activism. You know, is that cool. what they call it? Yeah, yeah, activism. Yeah. So I post a lot um, of activist uh, things on uh, Snapchat, um, primarily because um, my IG and uh, Facebook have some people on there that still, like, I need to get them off of there. Mm. Uh, just because I don't want any stupid comments and, right, and right, just right. arguments and stuff. Um, just, just to keep more like-minded people. It's better not to argue with the fool. You right, know I mean? exactly, exactly. So, so uh, go ahead and shout out your uh, Snapchat. So yeah, Snapchat. Um, all right, so Snapchat, Julian Shy Town's finest. I believe that is the profile name, mm-hmm. and then the other name that I have on here is Abdominal Man. I believe that's the name you have to tag if people want to add you. Okay, Abdominal cool. Abdominal Man. So go ahead and follow him on Snapchat. Uh, what's your Instagram? Uh, Instagram is Julian Shy Town's finest. Okay. So same thing. Okay. All about Shy Town. Yeah. Know, place of birth. Shout out. Um, uh, I just want to thank you, man, for, for joining us. This this was dope. Man, thank you. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. Uh, we'll have you on again. Uh, we'll, okay. You know, we'll get more. I think we're barely starting to hit the tip of the iceberg yeah, with yeah. Um, what you're passionate about. You want me to do Facebook, uh, too? Yeah, what's your Facebook? Uh, so Facebook is Julian Kim Terrell Jr., my full name. Uh, Julian, that's J U L I A N uh, okay. Kim K I M, um, and I'll explain that in another video. Yeah, so I'll have all those links down below. Okay, so perfect. if they want to follow you, and then as well as perfect. with ours as well. Um, but make sure you hit that like button, subscribe um, for more content. Thanks, mm-hmm. bro. Thank Good you. Good time, man. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming, thanks, bro. Yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate it. you guys yep. for having me. Thank you. Let's go eat some uh, ribeye steak. I was just yes. about to say, let's get the food right, ready. out. That was fun. Heck yeah. That was, man. That was a good podcast. That was a good podcast.